Um, some of the advantages in using uh, MUS is it results in smaller sample sizes, right? Because you're, look, you're selecting individual accounts, you're selecting particular items. Um, it includes transactions or components reflecting larger dollar amounts. Uh, it's effective for overstatement errors, and it's generally simpler to use than classical variable sampling, which is why you see it being used quite often. Disadvantages is it provides a conservative estimate or a higher estimate of misstatement. Uh, there, it's not effective for understatement or omissions, right? Because let's think about uh, accounts receivable. If a customer, if, if the company has um, a, a lower amount recorded on their books, for accounts receivable, let's say they forgot to, uh, there was a breakdown in internal controls and they did not record a shipment to a customer. So it's not going to be in the balance, right? It's not going to be in the accounts receivable balance because they didn't record the shipment because, and they didn't record the revenue. The likelihood that a customer is going to come back and say, oh, no, we owe you more than that. It's probably smaller than if a customer, if you over if the, if the balance that you have is higher than what the customer's books and records show, right? So it doesn't, it's really, so you're starting with this, the, the accounts receivable and selecting customer accounts. It, as a result, you're not going to be able, you're going to have to perform other tests for um, understatements. Um, it's difficult to expand the sample um, if your initial conclusion is to reject the account balance, right? So what are you going to do? Go back? You could, you know, now you're going to confirm a lot more. So you have to, you, you're, you're, there's some, for the efficiency, there's some trade-offs that you're making. Um, you have to think about how you're going to handle accounts with zero or negative balances. Right? So an auditor in that case might look at those accounts separately. 